nice to be back at Christ Church where I spent many a, a lunch and some pleasant, some not so pleasant, but all important. <laughs> um, I, I'd rather lose the debate uh, overwhelmingly than uh, impact my relationship with my friend Tyrone Yates, so huh? I'm going to be um, <laughs> very factual and, and analytical and not critical, at least of my opponent, who's been my friend for many, many, many years. Um, and I, I think if I just take about five minutes, will that, is that okay about five minutes? <clears throat> Every day uh, in Ohio, thousands of people, either families or church groups or fraternal or organizations, wedding parties, they get on buses, they get in their cars, and they drive about 35 minutes from here, or they drive to West Virginia, or they drive to Pennsylvania, or they drive to Michigan, and they gamble. To the tune of about $1 billion a year, where Ohioans go to other states to gamble. We, have, we respect, and always have respected, the opinions of those who believe that gambling on a moral basis is just wrong. But I would, I would suggest to those people that the argument is over between the internet, the states around us, horse racing, the lottery, the list goes on and on. People are gambling. The question, which issue three poses, is whether, not whether people are going to gamble. It's not if people are going to gamble. The question is where they're going to gamble and whether Ohio will use the revenue that currently goes to other states to generate jobs, economic opportunity here in Ohio. Let me give you an example. And this comes from Tyrone, my friend Todd Porto. When the, when the company, this is Todd's story, so you have to call him to verify. But when the company Graders was up for looking for a new headquarters, you may remember a year ago. The competitor with us, Cincinnati, was Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And Todd's view, which is, um, I think, the correct one, was that Lawrenceburg, Indiana, was using money spent by Ohioans at a, at a, a casino in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, to lure a Cincinnati company to Lawrenceburg. So there are jobs at stake here that aren't even reflected in our number of the creation of 34,000 new jobs. This, this casino, let's talk about Cincinnati quickly. This casino would be built at Broadway Commons where many of us have struggled for decades to try to get something going at that site. Many of us thought of the ballpark would be better at Broadway Commons. Um, it will be a minimum spend of a $250 million casino, but the study done by the University of Cincinnati, which analyzed what it will take to actually build it, suggested that it's more like $400 million. It will pay all of its taxes. In addition, it will pay 33% of gross revenues, the fourth highest tax rate for casinos in the United States. It will pay 33% to cities, counties, and public schools. The exact numbers for Cincinnati are around $22 million to the city, about $12 million to uh, the county, and somewhere in between that to the public schools. We are not suggesting this is a panacea or even a significant help to public education. That's why we have to support levies and continue to do so. I will conclude by just offering that we have the support of, in Cincinnati, the firefighters, the police officers, uh, the AFL-CIO, the Building Trades Council, the United Auto Workers, the NAACP, the mayor, uh, a, a unanimous county commission, and I know I said I was going to conclude with that, but I'm going to 
conclude with this. Every commercial that you see against issue three, every one, is paid for by a guy who owns a casino in West Virginia. And, and I think if, if you're against gambling on moral grounds, uh, God bless you, as they say, and, and uh, we will lose a lot of those voters. But on the merits of whether this is a fair proposal, and good for Ohio, and good for Cincinnati, I think issue three does the job and would be a wonderful addition to our great community. So with that, let me introduce my friend, Tyrone Yates. <laughs>